Well, honored to be here. Um, a lot of emotion has gone through uh, our program and our coaching staff's uh, minds over the last couple of weeks. But um, you know, four years ago, we won 11 games, and um, we capped it off this year with win number 40 to get here. When that regional uh, was announced and saw the coaches and the programs here, it was an absolute honor. Have uh, have played all of these coaches before and know how quality these programs are. But uh, as an alum of New Mexico State, uh, to bring the program to a regional here in Lubbock, uh, there's a tremendous amount of pride that I have, and uh, we're honored to be here, and we're going to compete as hard as we can. Okay, yeah, honored to be here. Obviously, I think this is arguably one of the better regionals in the country. You know, I've got three other really good coaches up here with me, uh, four really quality programs. Um, obviously, great to see Brian Green here uh, and the work he's done, um, and then obviously Dan. You know, being in our region, just a tremendous job. And then Tim, just a tremendous job with his program at Texas Tech. Just honored to be here for Kent State University. Great tradition, great program. Uh, alumni base, unbelievable. I know they're very proud, and I'm very excited for our players as well. Yes, uh, as Brian and Jeff said, uh, very, very familiar with the uh, these three coaches here having a chance to compete against them and uh, respect uh, much appreciation for what they do and how successful they are doing it. Um, you know, we played really well down the stretch in the last month of the season, so uh, it's exciting to bring your team to a regional. And obviously, uh, like most teams, you're playing playing good at this time of the year. So to be one of the 64 teams uh, that get a chance to compete. Uh, practice and play a couple more games is always a lot of fun. So uh, the University of Louisville and our guys are excited to be here. Appreciate you having us. Coach. Okay. Uh, first of all, just uh, got an utmost respect for all these guys up here and their programs. Uh, they do a really good job uh, with their teams. Uh, really looking forward to seeing all of them. Uh, you know, I, Coach McDonald said we're all playing good. I don't know if we played so good last week. I think all these guys were in a conference championship game, and reality is we'll have to play better uh, this weekend to uh, move on. And, uh, I mean, really right now you're just trying to survive each day and trying to play the best you can. And uh, But really it's uh, – Right now, it's, it's, this is all fun talking about it. Tomorrow, we get to go play baseball, and the guys are excited about playing. Uh, we play good at times. We played bad at times, as far as that goes. And, uh, but congratulations to all you guys. Uh, you know, I, Lubbock does a great job with hosting regionals. We've got great people here. We've got great food. And uh, nothing else, we ought to all eat good. So. All right, at this time, we'll open the floor to questions. Um, please raise your hand. Curry over there will bring the microphone over to you. And uh, just a reminder, please identify yourself um, prior to your question. Don Williams from the Lubbock Avalanche Journal. Um, question for Coach McDonald. You guys are obviously used to being being the host team. Um, have done it for several years in a row. How different is it for your program to be on the road this week, and does it change your approach at all? No, I think we just uh, we just went through a, a magical run, and we were fortunate to to have that run of uh, consecutive host at home. But uh, there's no shame in in having to go on the road. There's only 16 teams, unfortunately, that get to host, and uh, it's uh, very competitive. You know, so it's. Uh, it's a challenge like, you know, three teams every year have to go on the road in a four-team regional. So uh, it's kind of where we started in 07. I've compared this team a lot uh, to the 07 team with uh, their love for each other and playing for each other and enjoying each other. And um, probably wouldn't be here today if it weren't for that 07 team. So uh, it's just part of it. You know, we're not, we're not looking at it as a slight or – disrespect or anything like that it, it is what it is we, we didn't deserve to to host a regional but man we're happy as heck we deserve to be in one and uh we're honored to be playing against uh you know in the same regional with these three programs because uh, like tim said a lot of respect for these guys and we're looking forward to the challenge Mackenzie Morris, 
Charles with the Daily Toreador. So really for all of y'all, there's some high temperatures expected, really dry heat. Have y'all done anything different than normal games to prepare for really high temperatures this weekend? Las Cruces has been real good with us in terms of heat, so we're, we're, we'll be prepared. <laughs> Do you know where Kent State's at? <laughs> we, we play in pretty cold weather. Um, and we'll take this weather any day of the week compared to what we've been playing playing in. So really excited to be down here. Um, I heard it was 130 degrees on the turf today. Uh, we should be OK. We should be all right. Well, we chose to wear black uniforms uh, tomorrow just because Texas Tech said they were wearing black. and. I don't like losing uh, in any any competition, so figured we'll we'll wear black as well. But uh, Tim and I joked about the cooler temperatures we played in earlier in the year. I don't like to talk about those temperatures from Louisville because it's uh, usually 70 and sunny there, but it wasn't uh, that week. So, uh, but you know, as Jeff said, you know, this time of the year it's it's hot all over the country, uh, and our kids need to embrace that and enjoy it. Uh, Compared to the beginning of the year and the challenging temps, this was a tough winter across the country. So this is something that our kids should enjoy. And uh, I guess hydration's been, been the word of the week. We've just tried to drink a lot of water. Uh, tried to tell the guys to drink a lot of water. I don't think you really know how you're going to handle it till you get out there, till you get in the middle of it. And... Uh, as far as all that goes, I mean, you just really just hope everybody's safe throughout the weekend. And nobody does get overheated because that obviously could happen because uh, it is hot on the turf. And uh, I know Steve Maines and everybody, Mike Ryan, they'll, they'll have they'll have areas to cool off for people and they'll let people in the stadium bring the water in and all those kinds of things. And good thing we have the nice awning out there behind home plate for the fans and uh, but as far as the guys go, uh, I think guys like playing baseball, whether it's cold or hot. I think we miss spring. I mean, if there was a couple of days of spring in there, let me know. I think we, I missed it. I mean, we, we went from cold, like Dan was saying, to, to hot, it seemed like. So, uh, but at this time of year, I mean, you're not, you're not concerned about the weather so much other than what you can do before. And I shouldn't say you're not concerned. You're just trying to do the best you can with it. And, Somebody overheats, you try to take care of them. Carlos Silva from the Lubbock Avalanche Journal. Coach Green, uh, I know you've obviously played against uh, Texas Tech so far the last two times. Uh, this time won't be a midweek game. Is there a little bit of a different approach for you all going into this one? Tech, I thought Texas Tech had the best team that we played all year, and, and we, we scheduled really well. We went to the SEC for five games on the road, and we we're just we're always really impressed with what Tech does and the athletes and the way that they play the game. But we're excited about that opportunity. You know, for us, uh, typically our Power Five scheduling is is midweek. Uh, you don't see it a lot for us on the weekend. We had that opportunity once at Alabama. So we're excited at the opportunity to throw a Friday or Saturday guy at them and, and see how that goes. But um, we know it's going to be a tremendous challenge. Uh, there's comfort for our kids just in the fact that we've played them. Uh, but there's also discomfort in knowing exactly what we're up against and we need to play really good baseball. I can't add that uh, the game that we played together in Midland, Coach, that, that, uh, that was a tremendous confidence boost for us to be able to pitch well in a midweek. Uh, I think we were 24-7 and seven after we got walked off. It was a great opportunity for us. We really competed well. So. Um, for us, the familiarity is there, but uh, we're excited about the opportunity to be in this environment with, with weekend pitching. You know, our, our level typically, you don't have a five and six strong guy, so we're looking forward to it. Uh, question for Coach Green, also for Coach Tadlock regarding the pitching. Um, how much confidence have your top couple of guys given your team? And then after you answer that question, Tim, how, how different uh, does it kind of change things with the success that their top starters have had? compared to when you saw them in the midweek games? The confidence with our with our team right now is uh, it's it's really high. Um, you know, we've we've had a really nice offensive year. Uh, we posted some numbers and some guys had some really nice offensive years. But so our identity became that uh, throughout the halfway point. But our identity right now is pitching and defense. Uh, our pitching, our starting pitching and our relief pitching has carried us for the last three weeks. 
what Kyle Bradish and John Grove have done along with our bullpen has been astounding. Uh, eight runs scored in a five game period. Uh, we didn't have a pass ball in five games uh, and Bradish and Grove go shut out in a conference tournament. So we're relaxed right now and we're confident and we're playing really good defense and our starters have just done an outstanding job and we're really proud of them. Can you repeat the question? How, how well, two questions is enough for me. I'm not, uh, it's too much. What do you think of this Willis? Well, I think any anywhere across the country, you run into somebody's number one or two, and they're they're in rhythm and they have good timing at this time of year, and they're locating pitches. It's going to be a challenge. And uh, I mean, the guys he's running out there, they have good arms, uh, they have good secondary pitches, uh, they don't give in in fastball counts. Uh, you're going to have to do a good job of hitting, and. Uh, his staff does a good job. I mean, they do a good job with uh, positioning. They do a good job with uh, running the game. And uh, so any college baseball game, when you're running to a guy that's pitching game one of a regional, you, you figure you're up for a challenge. David Collier with ABC here in Lubbock. Coach, uh, staying along those lines, have you decided who you're throwing out there in game one? Can you, uh, I guess, look back at the way he pitched his freshman year and the way I, I clearly it's several years ago, but is that something that you thought would is a situation that he could handle? Uh, absolutely, experience goes a long way. Uh, and so, you know, he, he, we ran him out there on game one in Stillwater, and he came up with a little blister, so we didn't throw him last week. and. Really liked the way it looked uh, starting the game, and so uh, that's what we're going with. Carl's from the A.T. again. Just uh, kind of asking for Coach Green and Coach uh, McDonald and Coach Tadlock, I guess, is it kind of a unique situation where you've got three teams that are kind of familiar with each other where sometimes in a regional you got four teams that kind of really aren't familiar with each other? For us, the familiarity is just going to be the comfort just coming from our end at New Mexico State. You know, this is the first regional that any of our kids have been at. Um, so we're, we were just thrilled at the opportunity. But I, I think for us, uh, being able to to have had two opportunities against Tech, I think it gives us just a little bit of comfort walking on the field. There's certainly no comfort in the opposition uh, or any advantage in terms of what we've seen. Uh, we know we're facing a tremendous opponent. But uh, I think there's a little comfort walking on the field, particularly for us. You know, for us playing Kent State, you know, two teams from a similar part of the country, we're very familiar with them. We respect them. Uh, we know how dangerous they are um, with their postseason success and, and how much experience they have in the postseason. So I think for us, it's, it's good that our guys are focused on them. Um, I'm sure it's good that they played Texas Tech. Uh, just so much respect for the program and knowing um, how good they were when we faced them earlier in the year, and obviously what a successful year they had to be to be able to host. So, um, but like Brian said, just being in the postseason is exciting. I don't think the kids care if they're playing teams that they've played during the year or they're playing three teams that they haven't played. It's it's uh, just a lot of respect for your opponent, and excited that you get a chance to keep playing. Another question for Coach McDonald. Coach, uh, how much confidence does your program, I mean, the players in your program and everybody in the program have, just the fact that you know, the last five years, I guess you'll, you'll have not lost a game in this at a regional setting? Well, it's nothing that I talk about to the kids. Um, we're trying to just live in the present and, uh, as we say, just, just be where your feet are. And um, we're just talking about Kent State. You know, we're not really talking about the past or, uh, anything like that. Um, know your opponent, respect your opponent, and just do what you do. Just be who you are. Um, but that's that's nothing that we really address or talk about. Or uh, you know, it's about playing good baseball. It's not about history or tradition or anything like that. It's just about running out there and playing between the lines. So um, fortunately, for the last month or so, we've we've done a really good job of that. So just want to keep these kids believing and. Keep them focused, and um, as I said, just keep playing for each other. Chris, 
said, like, what was your thought process in uh, choosing to play the uh, the one o'clock game versus the evening game? Probably the biggest thing is is uh, is the gap between games. I mean, win, lose, or draw, game one, you you've got a little bit more time between game one and game two, and with the heat. Uh, I, I don't like it so much for the people that have to work from nine to five. I don't like that at all. People that maybe can't get to the ballpark, but uh, really just feel like uh, it gives your team a chance to uh, catch their breath after the first game and uh, get ready to go the second day. I don't know if we got anything figured out there. Honestly, I don't know if we had a week if we could figure it out. I'm not going to sit here and claim that we can look at a tape or look at a game. And really, baseball is pretty pretty simple. You go out and execute, and you play defense. Uh, you you can scout all you want, but we don't get to play. And so, most of these guys, the kids we have, have the ability. They just got to go trust their ability and and execute pitches and and play defense. I mean. You can go do your studies on pitching, and if you throw the ball down the zone, you got you're gonna have pretty good success. So, I I don't know how much stock I'd put in scouting between Friday and Saturday. If I could figure that out, believe me, I'd we'd bottle it up, I guess. Um, for each of the other coaches, I don't know if you. If you haven't announced it yet, or want to keep it secret, but could you tell us who your starting pitcher is going to be game one? We'll start John Grove. We'll start Joey Murray. Uh, we're starting Adam Wolf. Uh, follow up for Coach McDonald, um, and really for any any of the other coaches here, uh, for coach specifically, your I apologize, I gotta find the name again. Josh Stowers, are you uh, expecting to lose him to the draft this year? Yeah, uh, Josh is a super player. Um, you know, captain on the team, one of the two juniors in the lineup, and uh, we kind of expected. Uh, to lose Josh Stores and Devin Mann and probably put too much pressure on themselves early in the year. Uh, but really, really played good baseball this last month. And uh, it's just fun. I mean, we always have these draftable kids and they want to play at the next level. So you just want them to relax and play. And um, it's always good to see those kids playing well uh, at this time of the year. So um, it's a, it's, I don't want to call it a problem. It's a, it's a good, it's a good thing that you know, the draft eligible guys play well. And yeah, Josh is a guy that we expect to lose and expect to hear his name called pretty early in the draft. Green, I know uh, Bradish is also like a ranked top 100 draft prospect by MLB.com. Are you figuring this is maybe end of the line for him as well? Yeah, we would anticipate KB will, will not be back. And that was even one of the things that we discussed in terms of not running him out for game one, you know, he, out of respect to him, what he's done for our program, you know, he gave us an unbelievable effort to get us to this point. So we wanted to give him an extra day's rest, but he's had an unbelievable career. And uh, yeah, and we, we don't anticipate seeing him back as, as a senior.